Hello and welcome. Right now we are done with the phase one of this series and we are starting with the phase two of this series. Now the phase two of this series will be all about OAD and we are going to uh, make our API project work with both Google and Facebook in the end. So that is our goal. Now in this video I want to show you OAD flow to show you like pretty much how we are going to implement that. Now the OAD flow is kind of complicated because like not only is it like in inherently complicated when you first take a look at it but the fact that we are going with an API based approach also means that we are going to do things slightly differently which could be a bit harder for you like if you go on the Google and you try to research the OAuth flow the things you'll most often encounter will be pretty much non-applicable to the single page applications in which you have a separate API and a separate front end. So there are two ways to implement OAuth. Right? Right now we are going with the approach in which we have a separate front-end project and a separate API project. The other possibility is that you're simply building like a website and that you're serving like front-end content from within the server that is also like running uh, the backend code in which it's going to be like server side rendered. Now if that's what you want to do I'll also have a similar video that will explain in details how OAuth flow is implemented in that regards so if you're interested in that um, somewhere over here I will try to put some sort of a box that you can click and go to that video instead and I'll also be sure to include the link to that video in this description. Okay so without further ado um, let's get started with this video. So first of all when I say uh, OAuth I pretty much mean like some of these buttons over here that says like sign in using Google or Facebook or GitHub or many different services and I'm sure you, you've seen examples of, of something like this but for now let's pretend that this is our react application in the end and we'll have like two buttons and one will say sign in using Google the other one will say sign in using Facebook so now let's pretend that the user actually clicked for example sign in using Google and let's see where that takes us so as soon as we click this button and this light blue color kind of indicates that um, react component will get triggered so we're going to handle like half of the OAuth flow is going to be handled on the front end so in the react for example and the other half is going to be handled in the back end in our node server so right now all of this is going to happen uh, on the front end so we click this button and some react component that we use will get triggered that component will then show you that looks something like this so over here we have the web application name that is registered under a Google services and we are also going to go through all of those steps in the videos to come but most importantly um, this like pop-up window it lists all the access that this application wants to have using your account and then you have two options you can either like cancel that and disallow that or you can click accept and allow access to all of these permissions listed over here. So now let's pretend that in this example the user actually clicks I accept that and see what's happening next. So as soon as you click accept um, the goal of this component on the react side of things is to actually get access token from the Google services. Now this access token you can think of it almost like a special ID for your account that is currently hosted at Google services and that's the identifying piece of information that we want to get our hands on. So the goal is to get this access token and how will that actually happen is on the react or on the any front-end framework that you want to use um, we're going to need to somehow communicate with Google and to be like hey Google like we've got this user over here he just granted us his profile for our use and can you please like give us back access token that is associated with that account and once that actually happens and on the react side of things or I should be better saying on the front end side of things we have this access token now we can actually start doing some work on our back end so what's going to happen next is our react or our front end framework is going to use that access token and is actually going to call some particular endpoint that we define on our back end and it is going to send that access token to that endpoint now we can send it in many different 
different ways, but we can, for example, simply use body and send it as an access token and then just specify it. So this endpoint over here isn't magical. This is just one example. You can call it whatever you want. So now on the server side of things, we'll have that endpoint that will expect to receive requests with access token in the body. And now the server will actually receive access token from the client whenever client actually makes that request. Now the server's job then is to actually use that access token and to exchange that access token for the user's profile. So that is stated over here. So server calls Google and exchanges access token for user profile. Now user profile is pretty much like a JSON object that contains like um, a lot of properties like first name, last name, middle name, um, email address and stuff like that. Now if you remember that pop-up window which listed like all of the permissions that your application needs or want from the user like the more properties you'll have in your user profile once you actually get access to it and then what's going to happen is the server is going to check whether the user with Google's ID exists in our database okay so let's talk about this more slowly so this user profile will also contain a property called ID now that ID doesn't have anything to do with us it is a Google Google's ID, how Google actually stores your profile among many others. So what we want to do is we want to check our database, in our particular case like Mongo database, to see whether we have some, some profile or some document I should say that has that Google's ID. Now there are two possible scenarios out of that. Um, it could be no, we don't have it. And this is the first time we're actually seeing this Google ID. And yes, sure, we already have it. Um, what do you want to do next? So now let's take a look into that in the more details. Now we have those two scenarios and let's see what happens in each of them. So now in case we don't have any document that contains this Google's ID, which will be the case the first time someone authenticates using uh, say OAuth uh, with Google, what will happen is we actually want to create a new user using that Google's profile and store Google ID in it. So you can think of it like this. We currently have our empty database. What we want to do is we want to use this Google's profile, which mentions the user first name, last name, email, etc. We want to create a new user using data, but we also want to create a property that we can call something like Google's ID and specify this Google's ID over here. After we do this, now our database actually contains this particular user. And then we can quite easily um, just sign and create a new token using that user that we just um, created. And then we can send token back to the client. So now as you can see, like as soon as we actually create this new user, um, the two tasks that we need to do, namely like sign a new token and send the token back to the client is something that we already done with the local authentication. So really only this piece over here is the new addition. And in case we find, so let's say that user wanted to authenticate with Google, um, we didn't have him in the database so we went through this path over here but next time user comes to our site and wants to authenticate again using the Google well what will happen is um, the server will actually find that okay we have this document in our database that contains this particular Google's ID so now we're going to go with this approach that says yes and in this scenario we don't need to create any new users we simply want to load that particular user from a database and then what we want to do is pretty much the same. So we use that existing user to sign and create a new token and we then send that token back to the client. Also these arrows over here um, should just point in this direction. Um, sorry about that, that's a small mistake on my part. And that's it. So I hope that this over here is, is kind of making sense. Like don't worry if that doesn't make perfect sense right now because we're going to spend like a lot of time actually implementing that. But now let's focus on what happened happens next. And as I've said already, like once either of these um, two approaches um, take place, 
in the end, we simply send the token back to the client. And that is exactly what's happening right now with the local authentication. So really anything from here onwards should be really familiar to you if you follow this um, series from the start. So now we're going to send the token back to the client and then the front end application will actually have that JWT token. Then we are going to in the phase three implement some sort of mechanism in which like the front end application is going to be including the these JWT tokens by default with every request and will be quite easily be able to actually notice that all right yeah you, you are a good worker welcome back you're now authenticated and feel free to do whatever you want something like that so I hope this wasn't too confusing the main takeaway is when you want to use OAuth but you want to go with like API approach in which you have like a separate projects one for the front end and the other for the back end you are going to need to have handle OAuth like one part of it needs to be handled on the front end and the other part of that needs to be handled on the back end. And now we will start simply by focusing on the back end and we will try to figure a way how we can actually test that without starting a React project right now. But this phase two of this series shouldn't be that long and within like just a few videos we will arrive at a phase three in which we will focus like only on the React and after that like all of this should make like perfect sense and we should have it like all working together pretty nicely. Uh, thanks for watching this video. I hope that this at least like explains something and that now you have like clearer picture like of what our next steps are going to be like. Um, if you like this video as always please leave a like it helps a lot. If you dislike this video please leave a dislike and perhaps let me know what I can improve. If you really like these videos and you want to stay up to date um, you can of course subscribe to me and then you'll be notified about any new videos that I produce. Um, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video in which we are going to actually start implementing all of these.